lecture is basically about uh, trying to make people aware that as things change in the world, you know, for example, uh, one of the things that was brought in the beginning of the 20th century with the arrival of, uh, or even before that, you know, with the arrival of the Industrial Revolution, one of the things that changed is the way of travel, locomotion. You know, the train was invented, the aeroplane came into existence. And one of the things that changed was that people wanted speed. They wanted everything very fast. You know, which is even there in the concepts of fast food or um, instant coffee. You know, they want things in a second, which earlier it used to take mankind like many centuries maybe to grasp or understand complex things. So what has happened is a kind of democratization that has come because of social media, where you know nowadays everybody has a chance to write, everybody is a writer, everybody is a poet, everybody is a photographer, everybody writes a post on Twitter or FB or you know, everyone gets a lot of likes, a lot of comments. This is a democratization, you can call it a leveling, where everyone is becoming creative and everyone is becoming somebody, which is a good thing, uh, nobody stands out. But one of the things that we have often discussed, many of us have discussed is that in the middle of this, one of the skills that has really suffered, I won't say it suffered, but it's probably changed, is the skill of uh, reading. Uh, the more people write, the more people are creative, the more people are inventive, the more people are original. What seems to be lost is the ability to be creative or uh, analytical or interpretative in their reading. And I feel that this is a loss. Some people may not agree. Because nowadays reading, uh, reading is often about skimming and scanning. You know, you look at something. And you just pick out what you need or what you think is important and it's over. It's the age of information. You know, you Google something, what is truth? What is truth is the question that people have been thinking about and not being able to find an answer for from the beginning of the existence of mankind. But people tell you, you know, you want to find out what is truth, just Google it. And you Google it and you get some kind of answer, you know, what is truth. And you're supposed to be satisfied with that. That is the answer. <laughs> so this kind of a, you know, a shift in the way in which we read, I feel that it is detrimental in some ways. So that's what I'm going to address primarily. So I start uh, with this from Francis Bacon. And you know, the second part of this quotation I'll tell you after reading this first part. It says, reading makes a full man or woman. Reading makes a full man. Reading completes you. And the second part of this was, you know, I'm writing a ready man. A man who's ready for anything. Equipped. Ready. Conference a ready man. Conference a ready man. Writing an exact man. And writing an exact man. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, uh, this is something that's forgotten nowadays. That, you know, Reading makes a full man. So writing, about writing making people exact or conference making you ready, that's also things that I could talk about for hours. But today I hope to limit myself to the art of reading. So I'll start with the idea of reading, not at the basic level. But you know, I just want to tell you how we think about reading. Uh, because I'm going to connect it directly to analysis. So suppose you take the idea of political analysis, and I want to tell you something, you know. Uh, my approach is very metacritical. That means, you know, it's more thinking about the structure of things than thinking about the thing itself. So, you know, if you look at political analysis, you read it in a newspaper, you know, you find out that any incident that happened, and I'll come to that, you know, it will have 
uh, something, you know, that there's something about it that only local people understand, which is probably lost on uh, people at a zonal or regional level, uh, which is again maybe lost on people at the national level. And then there is international or global or universal level. And you know, what gets lost in reading these situations? or what is gained at the local level which is lost at the national level, you know. It's because, you know, when something is read at the international or global or universal or national, national level, they don't know the intra-textuality of these events. How this event, you know, like Dr. Yasin was talking about uh, poem being banned and about the interest in poetry today. So many people turning up being connected to that. So, you know, this is a local analysis, you know, which someone here would make, which would probably be lost on someone who is doing a global analysis. For him, you know, that person would think, you know, there's so many people here because this is an international conference, and he wouldn't know about the intricacies of the local situation. So, you know, the intra-textuality of a situation which is local, the intertextuality, the play between the local and the regional, and the national and the international or global or universal aspects of a situation. You know, the, the, the multiple aspects of the poem.